Hello, my name is Dante Renee from the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page. This is a page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Tonight's film is 1973's Hanzo the Razor the Snare. Hanzo the Razor the Snare. There it is, 1973. The lead is Shintaro Katsu. He is Hanzo the Razor. This is put out by HVE Entertainment. And we have some trailers on here. And we even have a little booklet on the inside as well. Uh, some liner notes. This is a film that I believe Hanzo's, the, the character of Hanzo, uh, plays in a couple films. Uh, this is the only one that I have seen. And, um... Let's get into it and let's talk about it. Hanzo the Razor the Snare, 1973. This is a film that really, uh, this is a Toho film. And, um, <clears throat> you know, this, uh, this when, when you see that production company uh, up on the screen, it brings to mind a lot of very interesting, unique, violent, subversive Asian cinema. Um, this is, this really mixes a lot of different genres in this particular film. This is a film that gives you the classy, almost, um, almost the classy martial arts films of yesteryear and mixes them with the exploitation underground Asian cinema violence and sexuality and perverse lurid subject matter within the storyline but mixing that in with excellent writing excellent twists and turns and story elements and plot elements that never remain stagnant there is a constant range of motion in this film constant action upon action upon action i don't mean in an action film uh, you know arnold schwarzenegger type format what i mean is is that the story constantly has an energy a vitality that keeps moving and morphing into other elements other physical locations and other story lines that um, continually move and breathe like a heartbeat through different scenes as the story continually unfolds and gathers elements from before into the next scene. You know, when I was watching this film, I couldn't help but think about... Um, you know, Quentin Tarantino and a lot of the way that he does films in the modern times. You know, really the throwback exploitation. And when you watch this film, you really see, and at least to me, where Tarantino pulls from. Um, in terms of that energy, in terms of that explosiveness, in terms of the twists and the turns that constantly keep the story moving and the wild dialogue as well. Interesting, classy, yet exploitative and wild. When we get into this film, the first thing I want to talk about is, is um, well, you know, the music. The music in this film is unbelievably diverse and interesting. You know, on one hand, we have this very avant-garde, experimental, shrill bursts and blasts of electronic wizardry. I mean, it's, it's very noise-oriented, something that you would hear in a modern noise band, um, the genre of noise, and it's... It's very discordant and abrasive and violent sounding in its, in its jabs. And then on the other hand, you have almost this classic Asian type um, atmosphere and music. And then you hear the wind blowing sometimes as well. And then on the other hand, you have this something that really sounds like 1973 exploitation cinema. Even a little bit of like a black exploitation feel to the music. Um, uh, the funky 
rhythms and the and the and the and the grooves you know really really a diverse score and then there's moments of darkness of 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 real darkness disturbing atmospheric darkness with the music especially um in one scene in particular of very disturbing uh, uh scenes of violence and 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 sexual violence when we look at the style of this film the filming style there's a lot of style to this movie i mean that's exactly what you would expect but we're not talking crazy you know uh martial arts zooms in the people's faces you don't have that in this film what you have are just lush shots. I mean, we're looking at really awesome architecture in this film, um, from bridges and 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 different landscapes and different uh, interesting uh, homes and rooms. I mean, this is a film that really is filled with rooms. It's filled um, with uh, almost small spaces in a way. But you have you have some shots like you have this one overhead shot that lasts for a little bit between two people people about to fight you know you have um quick shots and you have really cinematography that is revealing things because in this film there's a lot of revealing there's a lot of sucker punches in in um and even the explosiveness of the fighting and 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 the 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 insane storytelling that's happening here and there's so much style with the opening credit sequence that takes a while to start and the movie begins and then the credit sequence comes in i mean you really feel like you're watching some kind of modern tarantino film and you can really see that you know this is the original stuff here folks um you know essentially you have a story such an interesting, unique storyline where Hanzo the Razor is this man of morals who kind of has ties to um, his government and ties to, um, uh, you know, uh, justice. And what he does in some in some form or fashion is almost he's almost like he's almost like. Um, enforcing justice on the streets um yeah, almost like vigilante style yet he has connections you know to the government to his government and to the leadership and but this is a man almost like a christ-like character that he is uh, he's not so much in in pleasing the leadership and pleasing what the leadership finds right and wrong or just or unjust but what true justice is what truly is um kind of loving for the people and specifically for the outcast for um the people who are looked down upon and he really represents to me to me almost like a christ-like figure like jesus christ figure in, in, in a way because he pisses off the people in leadership the people of morals by enforcing kind of uh you know real morals f uh, for the people love the outcast and 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 kind of and kind of exposes the greed and the butchery of the leadership but he's also exposing um the evil of the varieties of groups of criminals uh you know within society and really what we have here he he always the, the story kicks off with him kind of um dealing with two criminals and they become his counterparts. They become his servants. And they provide a little bit of like this black humor throughout the film in some weird way. And they're interesting, funny characters. and But not in a goofy way at all. And they go with him throughout the film as he goes into these various areas of, of, of different, like just perverse, weird crime situations that eventually all tie in to the, like, to the, 
last half of the film as things get exposed and as he finally faces the biggest thief of all but then another twist happens and you realize that someone else is the biggest criminal um this is a film that really has some uh, diverse violence this is a very violent film and then there are moments of gore there are moments of of you know shooting blood but for the for the majority of it, it there's not shooting it just happens a few times and then you have a lot of just violence and stabbing and and blood and slicing and 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 shoving knives through body parts um and you do have um some sexual perversity in this film as well and some very crazy um, situations involving uh, kind of a demonic priestess and corruption in in uh, kind of a convent and and prostitution and kind of white slavery and 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 uh, abortion and kind of like an abortion clinic or kind of some demonic abortion priestess um, so there are all of these wild storylines. You're mostly what you're having here is mostly topless nudity, and also uh, women's behinds, and even the lead characters uh, behind. And I got to tell you something else here, folks. As if this wasn't crazy enough, the lead character uses his penis. He has a large penis, and in a training sequence like Rocky at the beginning of the film, he's training his penis. You don't see it. You see it through his kind of his loincloth that he wears for the like almost the entire film with like a thong like a sumo wrestler thong but yes he uses his penis i mean so you have a film that really you could almost see your grandfather watching if he liked martial arts films and then all of a sudden he'd be like turn this off right now that's what this film kind of mixes and it has very very wild sequences there's one especially extremely violent sequence in this film um in, involving uh the, the this this big uh thief this big crime lord and i gotta tell you this film is written so well there are so many wild twists and turns that will lead you into another episode of violence and 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 uh just unfolding of the story and hanzo the, the the character of hanzo is freaking awesome he's he's just hell-bent mission and he will take you do anything it takes and there's suicide in the film harry carry and there's just so many different elements here this is Hanzo the Razor, the Snare, folks. This is a wild, wild movie. I mean, the lead character uses his penis. Um, there is... Uh, there are sexual situations. There's rape. There's children dying. I mean, this is a wild film. Stab wounds and crazy fight sequences. Uh, but not fight sequences that last too long. Not like a typical martial arts film as well. The fight sequences are rather short. But, I mean, there are wild scenes of 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 fighting when it does happen and, and of violence. And um, this is a really, really... This is just an a wild sucker punch ass kicking perverse asian underground weird sexual um film uh there's some weird sexual fetishes in here involving blood and violence and licking the blood i mean there's some crazy stuff in this film here it is folks shintaro katsu i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly in hanzo the rays of the snare Wow, wow, wow. Put out by HVE Entertainment, Home Vision Entertainment. Thank you so much for watching the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Check out all my other reviews on this page and check out my own personal films at youtube.com slash poopydiarrhea. There will be pinky, a lot of pinky violence films being reviewed in the future and more Franco, exploitation, teen sex comedies, underground horror, all of it. Thank you. Good night.